Hey there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here with another AlterX video. And this one is inspired by a comment that I received on a previous video about outputting data to multiple tabs within an Excel spreadsheet, while at the same time being able to add the date to the file name of the actual Excel file. And so what I wanted to do is take you through my thought process when I encounter a question like that or something that uh, I really don't do that often. A lot of the data and workflows that I build are hosted in the gallery and the output is presented to the user on the actual gallery itself rather than in file saved somewhere. So I wanted to take you through it. I've already got the completed workflow on my screen. So I'm going to create a new workflow. And the reason I want to do this is I want to take you through that thought process I mentioned and show you a little bit about how I think through these data flows and these workflows. So we're just going to create a, a fake set of data here as input. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take text input. I'm not going to take uh, file input. And I'm going to create a, a north, a south, uh, an east, and a west as a location. And those are going to be the tabs within my worksheet. And then I'm also going to create another column called sales here, where we're just going to put in some fake numbers. Uh, 250, 300, 400, so on. Um, and I'm going to call this first one location. Okay, so I've got location, I've got sales. What I want to do is put out a tab for north, south, east, and west, so four different tabs. And then I want to name that uh, the file that gets put out with a date onto the end of it. So we're going to call it something like sales data dash and then today's date. So let's go ahead and um, add a browse onto the end of it. And then we're just going to hit control R to run this workflow really fast and just make sure that the data is output the way that I think it is. So north, south, east, west, so on. And now what I want to do is uh, go ahead and replicate the problem first that this particular person had and left a comment for, and then go back and, and fix it. So one of the things that I like to do as part of any process where I'm pulling in data is to use the auto field tool and to select tool. In fact, I think this should be a common design pattern here where all these tools get dropped on. So it's going to take the input data, determine what data type it is, and then change that to the right type. So the location is string and sales is integer. Now at this point, I can go ahead and uh, and put the data out, except I want to do one other thing, which is to drop in a formula tool uh, from the preparation menu. And on this formula tool, we're going to put uh, today's date. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say add column and I'm going to call this column file name date. So I sort of know what it is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this uh, or I'm going to call the date function for uh, date time today. And that's just going to give me uh, today's date uh, as an output here. All right. And then we're going to go to the in out palette and we're going to choose output data and we're going to select uh, Excel file as what we want to output. It's going to prompt me for a file that I want to output this to and I said I was going to call this sales data so that's what I've chosen. Yes I want to replace it and then give it a sheet name and we're just going to leave it sheet one and then click OK. All right so now what's going to happen is we're going to create a new sheet by default but I'm going to tell it to overwrite the file in essence remove the file and overwrite it. And then we're going to do um, we're going to do a couple other things here. One is I can take a file name from uh, an input field, and I want to be able to do that. Uh, and I want to be able to append the file name onto the end of the file. And the and the name that I want to append uh, is the file name date. Uh, and then I can choose whether I want to keep it in the output or not. And I don't want to keep it in the output. Okay, so from this, it's it seems like I kind of have this set up. I'm going to go ahead and output this file. It's going to have uh, the date associated onto the end of it, uh, and we're going to run it and see if that's actually what's going to happen. It's not, but that's that's what we're thinking in our mind is going is going to happen. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, it completed successfully, and then we're going to go into Windows Explorer here. I've got my temp directory set up and I have the sales data file and we're going to go ahead and open that file. All right. And I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so it uh, fits within the recording area of the screen. All right. Now, 
I've got the file. The file was called sales data. In fact, if we go back and we look at it, uh, you'll notice it doesn't have the name on the end of it that I thought it was going to have. All it did was append the date. So today's date is January 5th onto the end of the sheet. Hmm. It's not what I wanted it to do. That's the problem most people run into. So let's go ahead and, and close this out. And let's go back and rethink the problem here because this didn't do exactly what we thought it was going to do. What happens within the output tool is whatever sheet we said we were wanted it to use in the write to file, that name up there is where it's going to put it. And that's really what it's appending this field name onto. All right. So it didn't change the field name and then it also didn't output the uh, the north, south, east, west of those locations into separate tabs either. So it actually missed on two accounts. It got both things wrong. Um, so I have to sort of rethink how I want this want this to work. So if you look at this right file location, it's got three pipes and then the name of the sheet. OK, so think about in your mind what that's actually doing. It's using that input, those three pipes as where it's going to put the sheets. So I need to create a separate column that's got the sheets already listed with the name that I want it to be. Then I can go ahead and replace the entire path that I'm outputting to the file name and that should do the trick. That's exactly how it should work, thinking about it the way that Alteryx is doing it. So to achieve that, we need to do a couple different things here. I need to go back into my formula tool for one, and I need to make this the complete path of what I'm going to output. Now, thankfully, I've already got the path here. So doing it and running out the file the first time is a bonus. So we're going to take that and I'm just going to copy it, hit control C, copy that out of there, go back into the formula tool and I'm going to paste in this particular path. All right. And we're going to put it in double quotes. All right. Then the other thing that I like to do when I'm building these out is uh, is to do on a separate line the plus symbol, what I'm going to add the date onto, and then start doing it in subsequent lines so it's a little bit easier for me to read. So I know I want to call it uh, sales data, and I know it's going to go in my temp directory. All right, the other thing that I need to do is replace the sheet one. We don't want sheet one anymore. This is going to be dynamic. So what I want to do is go on a new line, add the plus symbol here, and the location of where my, uh, or the column of where the location is, is called location. So we're going to add that onto the end of the file name. And then what I want to do is add uh, just a little bit of, of um, space um, into where the actual name is going to go. So right now the date time today is at the end and I can see it in my data preview that it's at the end. I don't want it there. So I'm going to cut cut it out of there. Hit control C. We're going to create a new line and I'm going to enter a plus symbol space. Uh, and then what I want to be able to do and actually I need to do this in a little bit different part. I need to put it after data. So we'll take data out of there. Put that on a new line. Put a plus symbol after that. All right, create another new line. And we want sales data to come after this. And I, and I kind of want to do a little bit of a trick here. I want to put space dash space. So there's a little bit extra information there. Then I can go ahead and put the date in. So we'll paste the date back. So it's, it's plus date time today and then open close parenthesis. Um, and now it looks good. When I look at the data preview, C slash temp sales data dash. 2021.01.05.xls. And then I've got, after the three pipes, right, that's right here, I've got the name of the location, which is going to be dynamic. So for each row within the data set, it's going to put it out to that particular uh, location. All right, that seems good to me. Uh, the formula tool is working the way that I would expect it to work. Now, what I have to do is go back into the output tool. I'm going to leave the top part of this the way that it is. It basically is going to act as a template. What I need to do now is go back down to the bottom, make sure that take file slash table name from field is checked. But this time I'm going to select change entire file path. OK, because the whole path is sitting in that new field that I created. All right. And that new field is called file name date that has the uh, has the actual path. And again, I don't want to put that into my output. Now, going back, thinking logically about how this should work. I'm replacing the entire file name with a name that contains the date of today, 
was when it was run. Then I've got three pipes, and appended to those three pipes is the location field of where I want that to show up in the tab names of the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. So I'm gonna run it. Let's go ahead and go on over to Windows Explorer and see the file name that got put out here is the file name. Let's go ahead and double click on it, we'll open it up and see if we've got the um, correct information here. Okay, now you'll notice what happened. It only put out West and the file name is right, but it only put out one individual uh, field. And uh, the reason it did that is because in the setup, I still have overwrite the file name. So what it's going to do is it's going to go and it's going to run north, south, east, west is the last one in overwrite. And that's why only one tab came out. So what I want to do is change this to append to an existing sheet. Okay. Now I can go ahead, think of it as, as a template, run it the first time, get it created, and then change it to append. And um, now it should work. Let's go back and uh, see if this is actually going to append it the way that I want it to. Um, let's go ahead and create it new. And it's still telling me that the sheet names need to exist. So let's go ahead and say, um, overwrite sheet or range. Let's do, do that and see if we can get it to generate here. All right, so that was the correct option there is to be able to overwrite the, the sheet name. So now you'll see that west, east, north, south is generated and the correct values 400, 300, 200, 100, and 250 are listed in there as separate sheets and the name is actually correct. All right, so to summarize it up, uh, we had to go through the entire path, change the entire path file name, set it up in the formula tool with the name that we want it to be when it outputs that data, and then change the output tool so that it's overwriting the sheet or range, and that will substitute the path and the tabs or the sheet names within the Excel spreadsheet. As always, please subscribe to the channel, leave your comments and feedback. Maybe something that you comment on will make it into the next video. Thanks.